Hello and welcome back to Two Day Pass. My name is Scott. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. And let's go. So we're here at Southall Driving Test Center, and I'm going to show you a new, very complicated test route. Along the way, I'm going to be telling you all the tips and tricks that you need to know to pass your driving test first time. Well, let's get started. So the test center is just here on the right. You would exit the car park, but because I'm not officially doing a driving test, I can't enter to the car park but this is where you will come out i've done my all-round observations like you'd like to do when moving away i've signaled just for the benefit of anybody that may or may not come along and i've moved away safely that's what the examiner wants to see right at the beginning of your test at the end of the road turn left please interior mirror exterior mirror left and signal left that way I've done the correct procedure for my mirrors, for my signal, and for turning left. And if you have multiple lanes, just make sure to use the left lane for turning left. Nice and simple. I've added a little bit of gas here, joining a new road, new mirrors, just to see who's around you. Very helpful to know, especially if you feel like there's someone behind you, you might wanna adjust your speed and build your speed slightly, obviously without going over the speed limit. Now, this road here, has speed bumps on it. Also, it's highlighted there of the sign telling me, but most roads with speed bumps will be 20 miles an hour. So if you're not too sure of the speed limit, you can't miss the bumps, it's just, that's a given, you're gonna see them, you're gonna feel them, then you might be alerted that it's a 20 road. Do keep looking for signs, as there are some exceptions to the speed bump rule, but it is less common. So you've got about 80% chance if you're on a road to speed bumps for it to be 20, but do double check the signs to see exactly what the speed limit is. If you don't have any signs, then you're most likely on a 30 mile an hour road, as most 30 mile an hour roads do not have speed signs. So just keep checking for signs and you'll be very confident in knowing exactly what your speed limits are. Some cars do display and GPS like TomToms and uh, other sat navs that are available will tell you exactly what the speed limit is. Um, however, technology can sometimes be wrong, so don't rely on it because if there's been any changes by the council, then you might not have an update to your technology where that's telling you the new correct speed limit. So you must, must, must look for signs to tell you speed limit. At the end of the road, turn left, mirror, mirror, signal left. And I'm gonna go towards the bigger roundabouts to show you the more testing complicated routes at Southall. I've checked my mirrors, I know there's a motorbike following me, I know it's safe and I've moved into the left and I'm not giving any room for that motorbike to try and pass me on the left. So I've kept roughly a meter, maybe half a meter from the curb line on the left. That's where the motorbike is supposed to overtake on the right. If I kept any further away from the left, he would have now undertook me, and if I'm not aware, then I'm gonna turn left into the motorbike in the junction. So must, must, must be super aware. Mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. Drill that routine into you like you're a robot. At the roundabout, go straight. Look at the sign here on the left, straight arrow. Look at the road marking, straight arrow. You know exactly what lane to use. This is an unorthodox roundabout. I'm coming to the edge of the roundabout and stopping because there is traffic coming from the right. You need to give priority to traffic on the right. That is the rule for roundabouts. So until I feel it's safe enough for me to walk out, I'm gonna wait. Now it's safe enough to walk out, I will drive out. This is the best way to know what's a good time to go at any junction. Nobody on the zebra crossing, and this zebra crossing has an island in the middle, so I only need to stop for people that are using my half of the crossing. Now I'm scanning the road ahead, and I see a traffic light in the distance, and it's a 20 mile an hour road, so I'm really taking in lots of information, and I'm looking long to see how far, far down the road I can see, and what kind of signs or road markings or any kind of other little clues that are down the road that can help me to plan early. And this is the, the key or the secret, if you like, to a safe and you know confident driver. It's because they're looking ahead, they're making decisions early, and that way you know, you're not going to get caught out 
No one likes it when they're driving down the road and they're like, oh my God, what, what just happened there? Well, yeah, there's no such thing as a car that comes out of nowhere. Because if you're always anticipating and planning correctly, what might be around the corner? What might be over the hill? What might be further down the road that's blocked because there's buildings and parked cars and you know obstructions that you can't see around if you're planning correctly then there's no such thing as someone coming out of nowhere because you've got the mindset the correct position this correct speed to deal with this and this is what's called appropriate speed you know and keeping that safe gap from the left these are two huge areas where people fail the driving test they're not focusing on what's on the left because are looking too far down the road ahead maybe there is an oncoming car so now we're locked on to the oncoming car and now we're not thinking about the distance from the left where what we really want to be doing is taking one glance over to the left at a slow speed so that you're able to see and this depends on how wide your road is less space less speed the slower you go the easier it is for you to see and kind of judge that gap from the left which can be a bit tricky you can have reference points on your window sill ledge at the front of the car you can put a bit of tape or a toy um, that will help you to measure the gap from the left so that's another way and just a quick look one second one second one second once. And then you can look one second ahead to see the car coming, oncoming car. And then you can kind of start to adjust your spacing or even think, oh, you know what? That oncoming car is over the center line. I'm going to stop. And you can make these decisions at a slow speed early, which will show the examiner that you're planning. There is a fine line between too slow and too fast. Make sure that you do enough practice that you're driving at a speed that you feel confident. Okay, at this roundabout, straight ahead, please. It will be the second exit following the sign towards right slip. Now, this lane says R slip. The middle lane does not say R slip for right slip. Okay? Um, actually, so it's the third exit turning right, right slip. This is what you might be asked to follow on your test. You can rewind the video to see the sign ahead. Uh, sorry, not ahead anymore, although there will be one before I mean. And you'll be able to see the road markings clearly as well. So feel free to just if you double tap the left side of your screen, that will rewind you by two seconds. So just an easier way of doing it. So just double tap the left side of the screen, go back a few seconds, and you'll be able to see exactly what I'm saying. Now look, where's our slip? There's our slip. I'm double checking my left side because a lot of people go from the middle lane and they go into this lane. I've passed the first exit. That's the second exit coming ahead. Now, if you know your roads and you know this area, and I do, I know I could actually have used that middle lane at the entrance to the roundabout to go straight towards right slip. It would still take me there. But the road marking said our slip was this lane. So if you don't know your road mark, or you don't know your area, follow the road markings. Our slip, this lane, keep following it. Traffic light changed. Did you see that traffic light change? So much going on, isn't there, where I'm telling you, oh, what lane to use? Or oh, look at the road markings. Oh, well, that car next to me come into my lane. Or oh, what's, where am I, you know? So, woo, and then, boom, traffic light changes. It's happened lots before. I wish you could see behind me. I haven't got all the cameras on. You might have just seen that go reverse back towards the second exit and then turned in. All right, anyways, mirror, mirror signal, left here. Uh, my lane was only going this way, so that's helpful. Uh, I may or may not need a signal, depending on what the examiners feel is necessary. And that, again, is a gray area. So like I mentioned before, if you always signal, then you'll always be okay. Sometimes not signaling can lead into... You know, areas where the examiners say, well, you really needed to signal there because it would have benefited someone, etc. And this has come up in the past between me and you. You know, my students have failed for being in a right only lane and not signaling right. And actually, the examiner said, well, you know, that bus driver that was coming from the other side of the junction would have benefited from that signal, regardless of him being a bus driver and knowing he's. You know, his route and the roads probably very well. It doesn't matter. We're not going to assume that somebody else, if we signal, then we, we've, we've done our job. You know, we're informing them by putting the signal on, giving them that information. Now, it's their decision whether they're going to act on that information or not. 
but we've completed our obligations of signaling and benefiting people. So long story short, just signal, okay? If you're signaling the wrong way, then you're going to get into trouble for a correct signal and we'll fail for this as well. So plenty of practice, guys. Don't anybody, don't let anybody tell you practice is perfect. That's incorrect. If you're practicing the wrong thing a hundred times with your instructor and they're telling you to do the wrong thing and there's lots of instructors that I know are telling people to do the wrong lane or the wrong position at a junction, which will fail them the driving test. I don't know why that's happening. I've seen it. I've watched many driving schools do it. I'm not going to go into detail on that. But if you get told that and you practice that a million times and then you go and do it on your test, well, you did all that practice makes perfect, didn't you? And you still failed. Perfect practice makes perfect. If you're worried about paying a little bit extra for a lesson, you know what? You're actually probably safe. Don't do lessons with me, by the way. Do them with whoever you like, okay? But if you're paying that bit extra, that's because you're actually getting extra advice. When you buy yourself washing up liquid and you buy fairy liquid and you buy Sainsbury's Basic, which one lasts longer? Yes, one of them's cheaper. One of them's more diluted as well. That's why it's cheaper. So you get what you pay for, all right? Just make your decisions based on what you know from the video is very helpful. That will help you to identify whether your instructor's giving you good advice or not, okay? Right, we're turning right on this roundabout. Mirror, mirror, signal right, into the right lane, following the sign towards central London. No one on the right, double checked it, nice and clear, nice and open. Past the first exit, into your mirror, left mirror. As we come round here towards the second exit, right signal is still on. Into your mirror, left mirror. Start to allow the steering to gradually drift out. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Again, my window wipers went off because it's a bit of a design flaw in this car. The window wipers are attached to the signal, so sometimes that happens. That can happen to you in your test. Do not panic, just leave it, it will stop, okay? Best thing for you to do, safest thing for you to do, keep your hands on the steering wheel, complete your turn, even if the window wipers are going crazy, wait until you're straight and it's safe to get them back on. This is horrible, this is one of the most nerve-wracking situations to be in. I need to do 40 miles an hour, I need to join this dual carriageway, mirror signals early, build your speed early, 40 miles an hour early, now I'm still following the signs towards central London. Look ahead, can you see the sea London? I need the middle lane, mirror, mirror, signal, keep my speed. 40 miles an hour. I did check over my right shoulder only because I feel confident to do that. That will help me to see to the very far lane, which is my blind spot. So if anybody in the very far right lane tries to use the middle lane at the same time that I'm trying to use the middle lane, I'm going to see them by checking my blind spot. You see that lorry that just passed us? Imagine that was trying to come into the middle lane at the same time that I was moving into the middle lane. Yes. So speed change here, so it was 50, now it's 40. So you've got to get up to 50 miles an hour back there. Then make sure that you're at 40 miles an hour once you reach that sign at the top of the hill, which can be very difficult to see. Make sure you maintain 40. The van behind me is getting very, very close. I'm having to hold the brakes now to get to 40 miles an hour because the hill is trying to push me over 40 miles an hour. That's going to be the opposite once I reach the uphill part. It's just on the downhill part. This is the uphill. Now I'm accelerating. It's like being on a bicycle. You know, if you're going uphill, you're pedaling like crazy. If you're going downhill, you're holding the brakes on. It's the same in the car. Use that analogy to try and help you. Right, this sign on the left here, there's another one on the far left here. This is the VIP lane I was telling you about earlier, my most favorite sign. So that means that the lane that's joining, diagonal arrow, straightening up, is a continuation lane, a VIP lane. Now, I need to move back into that lane. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Now, if I didn't move back into the left lane when it's clear and safe to do so, and I continue to follow the dual carriageway using the central lane, it's not necessary. It's actually dangerous to be in the middle lane when you can be in the left lane. This is a serious fault for positioning normal driving. And that's why so many people fail doing this route. You can get this route at different test centers. You could have this route at Yedding. You could have this route at Southall. You could have this route at Greenford. And everybody pretty much fails because they don't move back into the left. The examiner is not going to tell you to move back into the left. You need to have done your perfect practice of moving back into the left lane 
when you know it's safe to move back into the left lane. If there's a queue of traffic going slower than the speed limit in the left lane, you don't need to move back into the left lane because you're overtaking and making progress in the right lane. The two cars that just joined the dual carriageway coming from the left are, that is a test route for another test center. <coughs> I have covered that in depth with the drone footage and slowing it down and outlining it, making it very clear for you to see. That is for Greenford. You may be asked to join there. When those two cars were coming out because they were in front of me, I let them go. So that's the, that's the rule, if you like, for people joining. If they're in front and they're joining, let them on. Mirror, mirror, signal left. I'm taking the next exit on the left. And then at the roundabout, which is Greenford roundabout, turn right, third exit. So I'm going to stick to the right lane because I know I will only be going right at this roundabout back towards Southall Test Centre and I'm going to show you some of the back roads as we cut back round through Southall Test Centre. Okay, so I'm going to be turning right at the roundabout. I'm about 10 car lengths. Now I'm about 5 car lengths here. Mirror, mirror, signal right. If you always signal 5 car lengths from a junction, you cannot go wrong. Signaling any later is too late. So anything from 10 to 5 car lengths. I'm using the middle lane because the right lane that I used when I approached the roundabout is allowed to use these two lanes on the right and the left lane gets to use the two lanes on the left. Knowing this and practicing this, again, perfect practice makes perfect, can really help you to be confident and know that this is your lane to use when you're turning right from that entrance to that exit at Greenford Roundabout. Woo, there's a lot going on, isn't there? All right, so now I'm in this lane. There's no lane markings, but can you see from the video, there's these creases or cracks in the road. I'm going to use those as my lane markings, following these as I go around, and now I can see the middle lane. That's me. Now I'm going to take this next exit, mirror, mirror, signal left. There's no one on my left. I'm going to go into the left lane. If there was someone on the left, I could have stayed in the lane that I was previously in, which would be the right lane on the exit. So as I'm coming down here, I'm keeping my left signal on. The traffic lights change green. I'm keeping nice steering towards the left here, not too much to the right, which means I'm going to keep into the left, keep to the left lane. I'm not going to cross over and go into the other lane, which would be dangerous. Still holding the left lane. I've cancelled my signal just in case it stayed on for the side road. No one on the zebra crossing. Looking down the road further, it's narrowing. Checking mirror, mirror, right. No one's there. I can move over. There's a parked car coming up here. Mirror, mirror, right. Making sure I come all the way out here, keeping roughly one meter from the left. Right, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go down a little bit further, and then we're going to take the next road coming up on the right. Okay, so there it is. I can see it just coming up. Big gap here in the building. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Go over these lines in the middle of the road, which are very faint. Do not crash in the oncoming cars. Make sure you give them enough room. But come into the middle and then make sure you're in the middle, in line with the center of the road that you're turning into. If you need to stop, you stop there in the middle, in line with the center of the road that you're turning into. And you wait for the oncoming traffic to be clear. Once it's clear, then you can proceed to complete your turn. I complete my turn all in one movement because there wasn't any oncoming traffic. I'm stopping here because that car oncoming had to go around the white car, which is pulling away. And the white car that was pulling away from the right, which is one of the maneuvers on the test, could not see the oncoming traffic. So I knew it was going to keep pushing out, causing the oncoming traffic to veer around it into my path. So for that reason, I slowed down early, giving enough space for the oncoming traffic to proceed, therefore making a safer environment for this weird person doing their weirdness here on the left which was the one that was causing the whole situation earlier. And yeah, okay. And at the roundabout, turn left, first exit, mirror, mirror, signal left. Last time I was here, I turned right, and I showed you the back roads around the right, where I talked about the garbage trucks or the rubbish trucks or any buses that might come towards you, as that's quite a sort of semi tricky road to do. You just need to look long and see if you can see any vehicles. We could use this road as an example. So I'm keeping one meter from the left. Yeah, it's fairly narrow, but I do feel like even a bus oncoming could still pass me on the right. So, you know, there's enough room here. 
uh, but some points can get more narrow. So here we've got the van, but look, the, the oncoming car can still keep going. So it's about the same size as me. I can keep going. I can see its gaps. I can see the distance from the parked car because I'm going slow enough to see it. And I can see the distance from the oncoming car because I'm going slow enough to see it. An appropriate speed. I'm going to go straight at the roundabout. No directions are given. Go straight. I'm going to slightly around it, just putting my right tires on the white circle. And I'm just going to edge up very slowly, holding the brake here. Here, but still just gently going because I could see the big red monster coming towards me and I could see it was over the center line of the road even though there isn't an actual line I'm imagining the line it's very faint here if you can see it but imagine where the center line is and if you see the oncoming traffic is over the center line I would encourage you to come to a nice slow gentle stop Okay, the car in front's turning right, it's got no oncoming traffic, it's completed its turn. I'm proceeding with caution as there's multiple vehicles pulling out on this right-hand side. Same situation as before, these vehicles pulling out into the oncoming vehicles. What are the oncoming vehicles going to do? They're either going to stop or go around it. By the way, there's only three actions that you can take as a driver until we get flying cars, and that is to slow, stop, or swerve. So the oncoming traffic, whether it's a motorbike, it's a van, it's a bus, it's whatever, it's going to either slow, stop, or swerve. So um, it may do one of those actions. I've got to take that into consideration, but maybe I'm going to do one of those actions. And then we're just picking and choosing, depending on what we can see happening, which one of those, maybe all three, maybe just one, might be the best action to take. Now, the traffic lights, I'm being instructed to turn right. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Even though I'm stationary in traffic, I'm roughly five car lengths from the actual traffic light itself, so I can just do some signals here, get that job done out the way, and now I can focus on what am I going to do next. Right, so while I'm sitting here, I'm um, turning right, um, all right, turning right, mirror signal position, yeah, that's all done, speed, yeah, I've stopped, okay, all good. I can't look really through this bus, but I can look over here to the right. I know this is a traffic light, it's a T-junction, so when we get the green and we're at the bottom, this top part is actually going to get red. So we're just going to be good to go. So I don't really need to take into consideration too much about what the traffic on the side is going to do. I've got my position. I've got my right lane. The bus is going that way. I can see it. It's signaling. Yeah, the traffic's all stopped. It's really open. I've reached the center of this road, and that's where I started to turn. Okay, what's the lorry doing? It looked like it might be signaling to move out, but its wheels were straight. So I wouldn't really rely on signals of vehicles Look at the wheels. It's much more of a guarantee to tell exactly where they're going to go next. If you can see where the wheels are pointing, you know where the vehicle is going to travel. Okay, so we're coming up. We're very close to the end of this route now. There's a few of these little back roads that you can do. But I tell you what, we're going to go down the main road again. So we're going to show you how to deal with the meeting situations with the buses that may come down the road. Al Albany? Albany. I'm going to see the name of the road when we get there. That's the same road that the test center's on. It's the address of the test center. And it's the road that has the 20 mile an hour and the buses. It's a bus route. And it's quite tricky to see them sometimes because there's bends. So when we get there and we go down this road, we're going to have a good look. We're going to look long. We're going to do this together. We're going to see what we can see. We're going to make a decision based on that information. But at the same time, we're still going to take into the fact that what we can't see, what might be around that corner, if I have to go around this corner that I can't see, what kind of speed is an appropriate speed? How do I feel controlling the vehicle? If I feel uneasy, that is a, there's a reason for that. If, if we feel uneasy, it's because something's not right. We don't feel safe. So if you don't feel safe, you need to slow down to start to feel safer. So this is a good way of telling what's an appropriate speed. Obviously, this is going to vary from person to person, but it doesn't matter who you are. If you don't feel safe, you need to start to slow down. Whether that's too slow or not, it doesn't matter. You need to do it to the point where you start to feel comfortable. Once you start to come turning left here, this is a street, mirror, mirror, signal left. See the pedestrians are walking out on the road. Well, I can't run them over, so I'm going to stop here before I even enter the road. Now that they've moved out, I can continue. And this is the road. 
Allenbury. Allenbury? Allenbury. Allenbury Road? Something like that. Okay, so this is it. See the car coming from the, the driveway here on the left? It's stopped. Stationary. So I'm not going to panic too much. Did ch just check my right side in case I needed to go around. But I can tell that they've seen me because they were moving and they stopped as soon as they saw me. Right, looking long down the road now. We're going to do this together. We're almost finished. What can you see? I'm keeping a meter from the left. I've got roadworks here. The dust is making it a little bit trickier to see. So I'm just slowing down. I'm almost 10 miles an hour there as I went through the parked car on the roadworks. Now we're looking further down the road. Can you see there's a parked car on the right? The Audi on the, on the lines, it looks like. And the red car is stationary. It's not moving. So I'm going to proceed with caution. The oncoming vehicle was slowing. It was stopping. This means it's safe for me to keep going. Judge the oncoming vehicles by their speed. This is the best way for you to make a decision where it's safe to go. The bus has just stopped. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Uh, right, sorry, to tell people I'm going to go around it. And I actually looked over the pavement around the left-hand side of the car because uh, of the bus, sorry. Because this road is twisted, I actually got an advantage. I could see around the left-hand side, further down this road. That's why I made the decision it was safe to go around the bus. If you can't see clearly and it's not safe because you can't see the road ahead, then the safest thing to do is to wait behind the bus. Okay, with this bus coming, I'm slowing down. It's not over over the center line so I'm not going to stop just coming into my half now I'm going to go over the center line if I go around this parked vehicle so I'm checking my mirrors internal and right going around the vehicle and making sure that it's safe before I go around the vehicle because someone might be overtaking I stopped because the oncoming traffic has priority and I couldn't go around the parked car without having to go into the path of the oncoming traffic so it's safe for me to stop Stop where there's enough room for you to pass around the parked car, giving yourself plenty of room to actually maneuver the vehicle around. Okay, I'm just going to pull up on the pavement like the van. We are allowed to actually do that here. And that's the test center here. Can you see this metal gate? That's the test center. That's the car park there. And that's the end of the test route. So I'm in the shadow. Oh my God, it's super sunny. Right, okay, if the video has been of any benefit, please don't forget to like, write your questions in the comments down below. I've been Scott, if you can see me. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.